Hey guys, uh, welcome tonight to our midweek Bible study. Uh, hope that you are well and you're doing good and that this week is kind of treating you right. Um, tonight we're going to begin talking about something that we'll probably talk about for the next couple of weeks, uh, mainly uh, the question of your calling and what is your calling. That's actually the title of the message and we're going to be in Jeremiah 29 11 here in just a moment. But um, what is your calling in life? That's maybe a question that I have for you this week is what is your purpose here? Why are you here and what is God's purpose that he has for you to fulfill? Um, so many times in my life I've had the question asked, Jacob, what made you become uh, a preacher or a pastor? Or, Jacob, why did you want to do that? And ultimately, um, it was not my first choice and, and I'll get into that some tonight. But what we're called to do is what basically we are set apart by God to do. And although I am able to do other things in this life, nothing would provide me the fulfillment and the, uh, the sense of accomplishment that I have in serving the Lord in this way. And uh, tonight I want us to look at what you're called to do and what your calling might be. And we'll probably not finish up tonight, and that's okay. Uh, but we'll be looking at that. So Jeremiah 29, 11 um, a very familiar verse that we're all familiar with. Um, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Let's pray. Uh, God, as we come to you tonight, we're just thankful for your word. We're thankful for the love that you have for us. And Lord, I'm thankful for these students who are faithful tonight to just uh, join together as we study your word. Lord, I pray that it comes alive in our hearts tonight. And it's in your name we ask all these things. Amen. I kind of moved uh, my location this week to the gym. I thought it was very uh, youth pastorly of me to do. Um, really would wish that all of you were here with me. Hopefully very soon. In fact, as this is airing right now, we're getting ready tonight to have a meeting with the uh, folks that work with our children and uh, you guys as we uh, talk about maybe when we can start having stuff on Wednesday nights again. Hopefully, uh, either way, maybe if that's still a few weeks away, we're able to go ahead and start having some activities. And so after tonight, hopefully I have some more information for you about that. Some of the things we're wanting to do, uh, I I'm ready. Man, I am so ready to get back to doing stuff and to spending time together as a group um, and just growing together. So I hope you are too. Uh, I know it's been a rough few months, and uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm worn out uh, mentally from just uh, all the change. And, and guys, I know there's a lot going on in our world right now. And um, maybe the question in your heart is, where is God? And does he have purpose in all this? And, and at, at the root of it, it's hard to see sometimes. Uh, but God is still very much alive, very much well, and very much in control. And so uh, there is purpose in everything that we're dealing with. And I pray that God uses this time to draw us close to him, uh, maybe to bring revival, uh, maybe to reorganize our purpose in this life. Um, but anyway, tonight I want us to look at our calling because as Christians, we all have a specific calling that we're called to do because God has given us the gift of free will. Uh, there are so many choices that we can make and so many different paths we can go down and take on our own. And many, many people, they have a career, and they have a, a house maybe, they got a family and uh, some of the other things that society deems is important. And society deems these as being a sign of success. Uh, but maybe these people feel incomplete. Maybe you're in the situation, guys, where you know, you're know you popular, uh, maybe you're good looking, maybe you've got everything kind of going off, but you, but you don't feel complete. You don't feel like you're making a difference in the world. And if that sounds like you and as a Christian tonight, um, it may be that you have yet to deal with the calling that God has placed on your life uh, because God has a purpose for you in this life. And your job is to find and fulfill what that calling is. Otherwise, you'll never find true and lasting contentment or fulfillment in this life. True fulfillment is discovering the reason that God puts you on this earth in the first place and fulfilling that purpose. So when I use the word calling, um, I'm not talking about maybe picking up the phone or calling someone. Whenever I use the word calling, I'm talking about the customized purpose for your life 
that is designed and directed and shaped by a God that loves you, something that he has fashioned and shaped you in particular to do. Um, and anything that God calls you to do, he will equip you to do. So maybe you feel like God is calling you to do something that you are, in your mind, unable to do. Trust me, God is going to provide the necessary things for you to fulfill that calling. He will equip you if you are willing to say yes. Um, in my life, there is nothing specifically that has qualified me to be a minister. There's nothing special or noteworthy about Jacob that makes him more qualified than anyone else to serve in this role. In fact, it was not something I really wanted to do. I kind of had other plans in my life. I wanted to do other things. I, I was a Christian. I loved God. And I, I had so much respect and admonition for the church and for the ministers of the church. And I loved my pastor growing up. But it did not change the fact that I really wasn't something I wanted to do the rest of my life. Um, uh, in fact, I ran from that calling for over a year. Uh, I was very young whenever God called me in the ministry. He started calling me whenever I was 14, uh, maybe even 13. But I ran for over a year. And I didn't accept that calling until uh, November of 2003. Um, at the age of 15 years old, uh, God laid it clearly on my heart that this is what I was supposed to do. And I didn't understand it all. Um, has there been times where it's been tough? Yeah. Yeah. It's not always what we expect it to be. And sometimes your calling won't always be what you want it or expect it to be. And there've been times where I've thought about hanging it up and trying something different, but ultimately, um, because it's what God's called me to do, I will never find fulfillment in anything else. I might find happiness for a temporary time, but joy and fulfillment will only come from me doing what God has designed me and set me apart to do. So what does God's calling look like? Um, what does it mean to be called by God? So it's a supernatural experience, guys. It's, uh, it's beyond what we are able to imagine sometimes. Uh, but when God speaks to you in this dramatic way, um, it's very much like he spoke to Saul on the Damascus Road. You know, uh, Saul was a persecutor of Christians. Um, he uh, was very much unqualified by worldly standards to be an apostle. Uh, but whenever Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he was blinded, his life changed forever. He was never the same after that. And so much so that he was given a new name and we know him today as Paul, who ultimately wrote over half of the New Testament. And uh, we are so thankful for that. Uh, but Saul was no doubt the most unqualified person to be an apostle. But because he was willing, God called him to do that. And because he was willing, God equipped him to do that. Um, so you may experience a dramatic experience like Saul did whenever he became Paul. Uh, but it doesn't always appear that way. And it doesn't always come to us that way like it did in biblical days. Mainly because... How God speaks to us today is very different than it was back then. Today, he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And so for most of us, our calling is revealed whenever we spend time searching through the word for what he has for us to hear. And we spend time in prayer and the Holy Spirit impresses upon our heart the will of God. And uh, then through that, oftentimes it will be accompanied by confirmation from the people that we're around and the things that we're doing. So in this verse, uh, we see here. So many things. Uh, I want to look at a few of them. Uh, first of all, you need to understand that your calling tonight is from God. Your calling is from God. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that God's calling or his plan for us is, is from him and it is good. God's calling is from a good God. Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So in this verse, in this generalized statement, we see uh, some things included in the Christian's uh, calling. First, we are to produce good works that bless and help others to glorify God. So your calling is not just what you decide to do for a living, okay? It's more than that. Rather, it's your divinely pre-planned service for God that is your response to the grace of that has been shown to you in salvation. So if our calling comes from a good God and our goal is to produce good works, then our calling itself can be nothing but good. Our calling can be nothing but good. That's the provision of God's grace. So the first thing I want you to understand tonight is your calling comes from a good God. 
Second of all, your calling has a divine purpose. Psalm 33, 11 says, The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. So, guys, everything that God created in the universe has a purpose behind it. Nothing would just exist for no reason. Uh, there is nothing that happened by accident. I want you to think about how we as humans, we require oxygen to live. So we breathe in oxygen and then we expel carbon dioxide. So it's amazing to me, not only that how our bodies work and how that system is designed to sustain life, but then we look at what else God did. Everything works in unison for a purpose. God also created plants and trees. And what do they do? Get this, they take in carbon dioxide and they turn it into oxygen. And so we breathe out what they need to survive. They breathe out what we need to survive. That's not by accident. That's not by happenstance. That's a God of order and a God that has designed things in such a way. So uh, you think about things as simple as the honeybee, but without the honeybee, it would be hard for the human race to survive. Guys, God left no detail out whenever he designed this world, okay? And because of that, he also, whenever he designed us, the crown of his creation, we were no different. He made within us a desire and a drive to find purpose for our existence. We, we are not content with just existing. Genesis 1, 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fulfill, and, excuse me, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So mankind's purpose tonight, guys, is to fulfill God's dominion over all the earth. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. But maybe you sit there tonight with this belief that you are different, that God may have purpose for some people, but there's no purpose for your life. Uh, God skipped over you when it came time to deal out that. Can I tell you, friends, tonight, if you're breathing, God has purpose for you. If you are alive and listening to the sound of my voice, God has a purpose for you. How do you know that, Jacob? Well, we look into the Word of God to find confirmation in these, in these matters. And when we look at Acts 13, 36, uh, it says, Now when David, remember King David, pretty big guy in the Old Testament, had served God's purpose in his own generation. He fell asleep and he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. When God is finished with you, much like King David, you will cease to exist. You will no longer live. Whenever God was finished with David, he died. He no longer continued to live. So it's a great comfort to me and it should be a great comfort to you tonight that if you are alive, if you're still breathing, and we hope you all are, you have purpose. God's not finished with you yet. So it's important to remember that the God we serve is a good God and also that we have divine purpose. Okay, our calling has divine purpose. The third thing I want to point out tonight is that our calling is tailor-made, especially for us. So your calling is tailor-made, especially for you. So one reason you want to grow and maximize in this spiritual development, these last few weeks of lessons we've been talking about things that help us grow and mature as Christians, the reason we want to grow and maximize those things as a Christian is to realize what our purpose is. Our specific purpose for us. I don't know anyone that has ever lived in this life that is content with the meaningless thing that say they simply existed. Like, here lies Jacob. He existed. No, we all want to leave a legacy. We all want to leave knowing that we fulfilled our purpose. We want to, to at the end of our life, to have something more on our tombstone than he just existed or she just existed. God has a calling for you. And the beauty of that calling is that it was tailor-made especially for you. No one can do what God has designed you to do like you can. Now, all of us as Christians, we kind of have a general calling to, 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 be, to be light bearers, to be salt of the earth, to bring the gospel to all four corners of the earth. We know that. 
but more specifically, we all have a calling that only we can fulfill in the way that God designed us to do that. So Philippians 2.12, Paul wrote, work out your own salvation. Guys, it's your salvation. It's nobody else's. Work out your own salvation. So while we all serve the same God, he in himself is infinitely creative. Like I, we, we, we run out of things to do. Like if I was to try and draw 10 pictures with 10 different faces, at least three of them is going to look alike. Because my mind, I just can't create that many different faces in my mind. But God created everybody different. No two people are the same. In fact, we all have different DNA. Look, look, at, look at your thumbprint. Like, look at your thumb. You see that print? That's a, did you know that's an original? Your thumb body. I know, kind of corny, but hey, it's, it's, you know, just bear with me. But that's an original. God created you special, unique. You are not the same as anyone else. So it makes sense that your calling would not be the same as anyone else. In the same way, this purpose that God has for us, I, I challenge you tonight. I challenge you to, to not be satisfied with anything less than God's best for your life. Don't settle for a paycheck, a home, uh, a couple of kids, and, and a couple of cars. I mean, that may be the American dream, but that's not God's dream for you. His dream is so much bigger. His dream is so much better. And it, the dream that you have, it probably pales in comparison to God's plans for you. Guys, we're going to talk about this some more, but some things I want you to take away from tonight is the fact that we serve an amazing God. Despite all of the things going on in our world today, God is still in control and he is amazing. And his love for us is unfathomable to our minds. We, are, we, we have finite brains that cannot understand the infinite God that we serve. And he knows you by name. He knows the hair on your head. He knows everything that you go through. He is with you at all times and all places. He knows all things. That's some pretty amazing stuff if you think about it. I'm thankful that his ways tonight are not my ways because my ways sometimes are terrible. I'm thankful that his thoughts are not my thoughts. See, he loves you fiercely. He loves you fiercely and he has plans for you that we can only begin to imagine. And if you're willing to surrender your life to his will, he will use you mightily to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be the church in these last days. Guys, I don't want you to settle for going back to the way things used to be. I want you to take a step forward and be who you are designed to be in Christ. It won't always be easy. It may be not always what you want to do. But you will always, always be glad that you did. Because everything that we do should be for our good and for his glory. And I'm thankful for that. Next week we'll continue talking about this calling of what God's will is for our life. And help discover how we can figure that out. So uh, I'm going to pray and close this out, and I hope, uh, hope to have more information to you soon about some things we're going to do. I'm, I'm just pumped and ready to get some stuff going, and, uh, and I hope to see you Sunday. So uh, let's pray. Father, uh, we come to you tonight. God, just so thankful that you love us specifically. Uh, it's not just general love for all people, but God, you know us by name. You know the hair on our head. You know everything that we go through in this life, and you stand with us, God, and we are thankful for that. God, I pray that you would allow your word to speak into our life and that it would be clear to us the will that you have for us. God, I pray that you would prepare us to be the hands and feet of you in these days. God, we love you so much, and we're thankful that you love us. It's in your name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Guys, love you so much. See you next time.